Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. Uh, let me first thank the organizers of this 13th Daily Sustainable Development Summit for inviting the Democratic Republic of Congo. I feel privileged to, to be here and to be able to collect from this distinguished gathering so much valuable information and share experience on the very important issue of resource efficiency and green growth. But as the presentation we have, we have just had can tell you, Africa is too large and diverse a region to be bundled in, in one set. Some of the countries on the continent lack resources, and some ha others have plenty. And that's why I'm, uh, I'm going to share the point of view of uh, the DR Congo. The country has uh, large endowments in, in natural resources, about 80 million hectares of cultivated, cultivatable land. Congo has 52% uh, of the continent water resources. And the potential of hydropower is estimated at about 100,000 megawatts. But only to date, 2.5% of that potential is exploited. 155 million hectares of forest cover. That is about 66% of the country's land area. The country is also well endowed in mineral and forest resources. In the early 2000s, after long years of neglect and political instability, a more liberal mining code, which uh, opened up the sector to foreign investments, and a more conservative forestry code were enacted. Today, mining contributes 25% of GDP growth rate, while because of uh, moratorium on new forest concessions, the contribution of forestry has been lagging. But of course, we have another problem, which is illegal uh, exploitation of uh, forest resources. And aside of uh, the mining sector, Today, to cater for the huge needs in infrastructure, major cement projects are about to be launched in the country. Yet, access to basic services is very low. Only 9% of the population have access to electricity. And about 26% of the population have access to drinkable water. Food insecurity is high. And in a rapidly urbanizing country, we know that uh, the capital city, Kinshasa, is already among the 20 largest cities in the world, about 8 million people today, and expected to rise to 15 million people in 20 to 25 years to come. So in such a rapidly urbanizing country, the extraction rate of energy resources from the rural areas is increasing rapidly. And in Kinshasa, bus transport is still the major mode of urban, urban mobility with a large number of old and polluting second-hand buses imported from Europe. Kinshasa itself exemplifies the challenges that the country faces. This city of about 8 million people consumes up to 6 million tons of bioenergy equivalent per year. Wood-based biomass, charcoal and firewood, is so far the major source of energy. It accounts for 85 to 90 percent of total supply of energy. 
therefore laying a huge toll on the forest resources around the city. Cultivation methods, basically slash and burn, have not changed, the results of which are declining soil, soil fertility, decreasing crop yields with uh, variations in annual rain, rainfall laying additional pressure on productivity. It's then clear that there are huge human needs to be met as the country strives to reduce poverty within a dynamic context led by urban growth and internal migration fueled by pressure on land and armored conflicts in the eastern areas. The government has started working on a climate national plan with two main components. A low emissions development strategy on one hand and an adaptation strategy on the other hand. The choices made are rooted in the awareness of the particular natural wealth of the country and in the international commitments we entered into. On a macro level, economic development relies heavily on extractive industries, mining, forestry, and on a lesser extent, oil. These sectors will drive growth for some more years to come. But diversification of sources of growth is a must and adaptation to climate change in the agriculture sector is therefore more than a necessary step. At the same time, pursuing a long tradition of environmental conservation, large areas with unique ecosystems benefit from a protection status. These protected areas represent today 10% of the country area, and we have set to raise that proportion to 17% by 2020. And being the second tropical forest country after Brazil, DR Congo has launched a Red Plus framework strategy and set up a Red Plus national fund that we presented in Doha last November. On a regional and sectoral level, we are aiming at remaining a low emitter of carbon gases. This battle is to be waged and won in the way we plan for urban development. Sustainability-oriented innovations are needed in urban transport, waste management, and energy provision. These, these innovations should lead should lead us in the transition from wood-based biomass energy systems towards renewable sources of energy. And they should also lead us, lead our search for means and ways to decongest and our fast-growing cities by investing in efficient public transportation systems. We are, for instance, thinking to reinvent rail transportation or, to re or river transportation in the largest city, which is uh, Kinshasa. Uh, I wanted to share these few thoughts with you. I will let it there. And once again, thank you for the opportunity of being here.